Hey there, Path of Exile's endgame is a particularly convoluted, overwhelmingly massive, and unnecessarily intimidating mess, and in my opinion, it's nearly perfect. A decade's worth of League updates has progressively made PoE's endgame harder and harder to get into, with each update making it to the core experience, adding to the tangle of systems upon systems that makes the game less and less approachable, but also more and more engaging. Now, there's plenty that can be said about how GGG could be doing a better job at introducing all these many, many mechanics to new players, but frankly, that's not what this video is about. This is all about just how great of a spot the endgame is in right now, and how I think it's actually the best it's ever been for people like me that are already invested in the game. Game. I'll be going over three big reasons to back up my outrageous claim, reason number one being the, the Atlas, Atlas tree. tree. The Atlas Tree was first added to PoE back in 1998 when The Undertaker threw mankind off Hell in a Cell and plummeted 16 feet through an... <laughs> no, actually, the Atlas Tree was first introduced back in the Siege of the Atlas expansion in January 2022 and has slowly evolved into the crazy awesome system we have now where we can pick and choose exactly what content we want to do and how we want to modify it to tailor our own personal mapping experiences. Now, I know a lot of people tend to just default to looking up guides and strategies and leaving the decision making to others, and that's fine. I'm glad it's so easy to share them, but I think the whole purpose of the Atlas Tree is to let each individual decide for themselves exactly how they want to experience the core and game PoE activity. Activity, maps. Some people like Legion, others like Expedition, some of us like Bossing, then there's Boss Rushing, and Fully Juiced 100% Delirious Crimson Temples, and then some like Blight. I mean, I don't see the appeal personally, and you're probably a total weirdo, but it's an option, and I, nor anybody else for that matter, can take that away from you. Not only that, but as a self-proclaimed Blight hater, I have the option to never see that singing nun in my maps again. Blocking lead mechanics is a godsend. What other game lets you say, nah, I don't want to see that in my endgame. Not to mention, there are some crazy nodes on this tree now. More bosses when killing bosses? Yes, please. One big ass bomb for your expeditions? Sign me up! The ability to choose any league mechanic on the map device, not just Kirak ones? Seriously? That's awesome! Look, I'm sure we'll be getting even more improvements to the Atlas Tree as the game evolves, but as it stands currently, I think it's in an incredible spot and it makes mapping more engaging than ever, which brings me right into my second point. The Diverse Endgame. There are now more ways than ever to play this game without even having to step inside your typical boring maps anymore. There are simulacrums, five ways, blighted maps, yes technically they're still maps but they're pretty different, expedition logbooks, the entire flipping roguelike mode that is the sanctum, delve kinda, heist, and right now there's the whole trial of the ancestors tournament things. There are a lot of different game modes that you can specialize in if you want. Personally, I'm a huge fan of roguelikes so I've been spending the majority of my time in the sanctum prison, completely ignoring the fact that I haven't fully completed my atlas yet and being totally fine with the fact that I only have 9 challenges done so far, meaning I'm probably not going to be anywhere close to finishing this huge list here. The Sanctum is this challenging mode that you actually have to get somewhat good at in order to succeed. Like, it doesn't matter how much you RMT'd, when you step in there for the first time, you're gonna lose, man. And I think because there is this skill check where you have to learn enemy patterns, it feels so rewarding when you actually get good and beat up Lycia over and over. Also, it doesn't hurt that it makes you rich, but, you know. The other mode I spent a bunch of time in this league was actually Delve, and I have some thoughts. First of all, yeah, you do need to collect sulfite in maps so that you can actually delve, but with the right setup you can fill up your tank pretty quickly. I don't really have a problem with that, though I do question whether sulfite is really necessary when we have things like forbidden tomes which are tradable, allowing people to spend their entire league in the sanctum. Why can't delvers just stay in the mines? How is that any different? Anyways, no, my actual issue with delve is just how incredibly long it takes to get deep enough to start seeing good rewards frequently. Now I didn't keep track of my actual time spent, but if I had to guesstimate, I would say I spent at least a dozen hours in the mines, going downwards as much as possible, and I only reached depth 300. 25. For those of you not in the know, that is still considered to be a very shallow depth and nowhere near where the good rewards start becoming consistent. And to be clear, this wasn't an issue with my build or a skill issue or anything like that, it just plain old takes a lot of time to delve and I don't think it's worth it unless you plan on doing it all league or something. I wish I could have just started at a much lower depth because I am certain that my Mjolnir Manabon character was more than capable of handling it. Anyways, small delve rant over, the other modes don't seem to have this problem so that's why I brought it up. I think it's incredibly refreshing that we can choose to just engage with all these different POE experiences whenever we feel like it. Now obviously this is a trade league thing, SSF is more limited, but you know, you get my point. And speaking of points, my third point and reason as to why I think the endgame is better than ever is that all of these systems feed into each other in some intricate and messy but possibly intentional way. Hear me out. What do all of these systems have in common? They all drop loot. So many different loot types are worth something to someone else. Sanctum gives you a ton of sextants. Who needs sextants? Generic mappers and people who like wasting their time sitting in their hideout rolling sextants for profit. Okay, what do sanctum runners need? Well, not much, but they do need tomes. Where do those come from? Maps. What about heist? What does heist drop? Well, lots of different currencies, sure, but something that you can't really get anywhere else? 
alternate quality gems and some very specific uniques. Who needs those gems? Uh, pretty much everybody. What do full-time heist enthusiasts need? Well, they need contracts, blueprints, and rogue markers. Where do you find those? In maps. Third example, what does delve drop? Mostly fossils and resonators that gamblers, <coughs> sorry, crafters like Lokohol use to craft awesome items and gain depression. Who uses these awesome items? Everybody. Look, I could go on listing every single different game mechanic and how it contributes to the overall PoE economy, but more importantly how it rewards all these different ways of enjoying the game, but I feel like that would just be a waste of your time because I think by now you get it. Everything is interconnected and that's what makes Path of Exile so complex and confusing, but also so incredibly satisfying at the same time.